Hi guys, thanks for joining again. I'm John with Entex Corporation and uh, we're gonna walk through our mini system. Um, if you joined us a few weeks back, we walked through our mini system. We were running a few uh, batches of product and kind of walking through the, the operation of the equipment. So today I'm, I'm keeping the noise a little down a little bit in the lab. Uh, I don't have the headphones on. Uh, so the, the equipment's not uh, live from, a, from the vacuum systems running and the uh, air compressors and whatnot. Actually, you might hear air compressor kick on uh, but the focus of today is really to walk through the R&D system. So that's the remediation uh, equipment that uh, removes THC from, from CBD biomass uh, or crude oil. So I'm going to really spend most of the time walking through that piece of equipment and that technology. But um, I'll walk through the mini system because I know that was part of the, of the uh, broadcast and just kind of our, our mini system in general. So I'm going to walk through this briefly and then we'll go and spend some time on the remediation system. So. Uh, so yeah, so let's get started. Um, thanks again for joining. I apologize for any background noise. We're, we're in our shop here, so there's some fabrication noise in the background, but uh, hopefully it's, it's uh, you can still hear me speaking. If, if not, then I'm sure I'll get a, um, a cue from, from our team here. Uh, so just in general, in, in summary, this is our MIDI 9 processing system here. I'm going to walk through this. This is um, a processing system that goes from uh, hemp or or a biomass input to a crude and or distillate final product. So we have the extraction system, the evap system, the car, the, a desol unit, and we have the distillation unit uh, on this piece of equipment as well. Um, so just in general, the way we've designed our mini series of, of products is we put these into a um, segmented, really, array that allows these things to be custom engineered to a customer's facility, um, also allows these things to be integrated together so you don't get any open pores, any um, open containers, transfers, uh, inefficiencies associated with that uh, from trying to address some of the traditional ways of extraction that, you know, you have to take product from extraction, transfer it manually over to roto vats, transfer it that over to vacuum ovens, over to distillation stills. So really combine all that into one integrated piece of equipment uh, that allows one input stream of biomass and one output stream um, of crude and or distillate. So um, that's what this piece of equipment does. So what we do here is uh, at Entex is we, we really design, we design everything here in house and we have our fabrication and manufacturing um, capabilities too. So we uh, machine all of the components uh, for raw materials. Um, all of the, the, the tanks, for instance, are made here in house or fabricated. We have a sanitary process a team that makes all of the, all of the equipment. Um, so that really allows us to customize everything from, you know, these tanks are triple jacketed. So you have a, a cooling jacket and you have an insulated shell of cladding that allows us to, uh, you know, not have ice buildup and whatnot on these tanks. And integrated level sensors, temperature monitoring, 
um, pressure indication, um, and then fully automated control from an HMI standpoint. So the way we've uh, designed this is laid this out into two um, interfaces, one for extraction and EVAP, and then on the other side of the equipment, we have the distillation interface, which is really um, specific to, to distillation. It's, it's kind of its own unique process. So um, that's why we split those uh, interfaces up into those uh, two, uh, two sections. Um, so yeah, so this is the extraction part of the equipment. So just like, you know, most of the ethanol extractors out there that, that use this type of equipment, it's very similar. It's a, it's a batch centrifuge. Uh, we can hold up to right around 40 pounds of biomass input, depending on your density of biomass. So we, we designed it to hold to be able to run 20 pounds, but if you have ground biomass, we can really run up to 40 pounds of biomass on the input. So. That is uh, what this what goes in here. Um, you put your biomass in a bag. You put the bag of material in your centrifuge, and then you start running. So, just in regards to running this, we we designed this and built this in house. Uh, we run this up to over 2,200 Gs of centrifugal force. Um, we integrate level sensors in here, and also the whole rotating set and sealing set, uh, and, and Support equipment for this is designed to go down to the low temperatures that we're rating this equipment for, which is the, the negative 80 degrees, which is the cascade chiller, which is the cryodax chiller. Um, that allows this equipment to be run at those low temperatures. So um, that's pretty unique. I, I know in, in running this side of the process, getting below negative 40 is a challenge uh, from ratings and from elastomers and all that sort of stuff. So that's how we approach this. Uh, once your biomass is in here, then you just press start on the equipment and everything runs from there. So from there, we just run. You can enter your weight of your biomass in. So 10 kilos I have. I don't, it's, it's Nothing's in the equipment right now. But then you just run it. We can actually just run a dry run here. And everything runs from there. So it's very hands-off. That's all you have to do. And then you can really go do something else for the next 20 to 30 minutes as this thing runs an extraction cycle. I think I have this set for like a three minute run right now so we can just kind of demonstrate it. But um, that's how this, this piece of equipment runs. So once your extraction is complete, um, the, the second uh, process in the extraction cycle is, is filtration. And so we go from extraction, the, the micellar, the tincture that you, you run goes through a series of filters. We have a particulate and a, and a carbon filter set that we run for cover remediation. Uh, just to clean up any, any uh, uh, quality issues with the product, and we're left with a really good um, tincture at that point. So that is over now into this process, which at that, from that standpoint, you're, you're left with um, evaporating the product, uh, the solvent from your, from your oil at that point. And so how we evaporate the bulk solvent is we have a rising film, so we run the rising film with, it, with it under vacuum, that it starts increasing the um, solvent quality, so you start the evaporation cycle, and then the following film is the bulk evaporator, so that removes most of the solvent from the equipment. Uh, we rate this thing at half a GPH, or half a GPM, uh, but we're running about a GPM through, it, uh, through the testing we've been doing, so it's, it's um, quite well capable of handling uh, decent inputs on, on volumetric flow rate. So this piece of equipment is great for bulk solvent evaporation, but what you're left with is something with about 10% or more um, solvent in it. And so, you know, traditional methods have been take that product, go to vacuum ovens, or go to um, uh, roto vaps. What you're left with transfer inefficiencies, and you're left with uh, just um, bottlenecks in the process. And so, how we address that is we have desolventizing vessels. These are again uh, triple jacketed thermal tanks that we run under heat agitation. Um, and vacuum, and then we could run that uh, solvent up so you're, you're desolventized down to the few hundred ppm level of, of residual solvent. Um, uh, the, the, the pass criteria is 5,000 ppm from an ethanol standpoint on um, COAs, and so we're able to really drop that down to a few hundred ppm. Um, and then, of course, the decarb. So you run decarb on these as well. So you, you, uh, your product out of here is a decarb. Um, Crude, full set and crude product. 
you don't have to run the decal if you don't want to. We can run the EVAP temperature lower so you, you don't convert um, uh, if you don't want to do that. But it's typically something everybody does that, uh, uh, from a processing standpoint. So this is the first output is from these vessels here. And the reason we have two of them is so you can run um, extraction into one over a day's worth of uh, running. And then as one's decarbing and desolventizing, which you know, takes about a four or five hour cycle, the other one can be run. So that limit, uh, eliminates bottlenecks in the process. So from this, you're left with a crude. So this is, uh, you know, if you're, I'm sure you're all familiar with the crude products. This is a really, this is a really good crude. It's um, some of the stuff we just ran here recently. And so this is your full spectrum crude uh, oil from that, from that standpoint. So here's where the process kind of takes a, a, a split and uh, allows you to make a choice on running crude output or um, running to distillate or running to T3 crude. So the reason that we run um, from this out to post-processing is because if you run if you're running CBD if you're running, uh, and you want uh, and you want crude here in the United States we typically are, are running in the two percent range or so THC in oil because as you have your less than 0.2 percent hemp that you're extracting that oil concentrates and you're left with a two percent range of, of THC in this which of course is is hot so there's a couple of, of um, ways to treat that of course one is you, you mix it down, you use it as it is. So you use it as a full spectrum crude oil. And you can take it to distillate. So, uh, you know, you clean it up, you, just, you, you take the color out of it, and you, you increase the CBD, and you just make a higher quality product. Um, the second thing is you can um, take the THC out. And so that's really where the remediation system that I'm going to go talk about is um, addresses, is removing the residual THC in the product. And so... Really, that's where we split the process if you want to go to remediation, is taking the crude oil from here and taking it over to remediation and removing the THC. If you don't want to do that, if you're running cannabis, which of course you don't want to remove THC. Uh, sorry about that. Let me shut that off. So if you're running uh, cannabis, you don't want to remove the THC, then of course you would just go to distillation. And so um, let me review this and then we'll, we'll go back to, um, to, to this process. So from a distillation standpoint, we run uh, distillate in here. So we run our crude product in here. You don't have to remove the crude. It runs over to our feed tank. And then from this cycle here, it uh, runs through our distillation unit, which is on this part of the process. And so this is our HMI for distillation. You have different routines you can choose. You can choose decarb, uh, first or second pass. And so that sets the, really the temperature and the vacuum levels um, for those conditions. And so um, you can run the first pass condition. So you're removing lights from the product. We typically run that a higher, a higher or lower vacuum, how you're, depending on how you look at it. So that's about in the two tour range or so. And then the temperatures are, of course, lower than, than distillation. After you run through that, then we can switch over to second pass and we're running high vacuum. So we have a diffusion pump. We have our uh, uh, cold traps that run off our casting chillers. And these run down to the, um, uh, to the, to the uh, millitor level of vacuum. So we're running down to the, about 20 millitor is what we've been running on this for second pass. And then, of course, the, the temperature settings are, are configurable up to 200 degrees C or so, depending on your product. So, so then that's your, that's your process for running distillate. So that's... Uh, something we ran. This is T-free distillate, which I'll get into here in a minute. Um, so just speaking of, of product transfer from this part of the equipment on, you know, when, when you make crude, it's very viscous, so it's very thick. When this stuff is, is, is cool, you can't pump it. It's very difficult to pump. And so from this part of the process on, we've taken uh, just really uh, specific design features to, to transfer the product to make it pumpable. And that includes everything's jacketed here. Uh, all of the lines have thermal loops running through them that, that enable the product to stay hot. So you turn a pump on, it actually pumps product. Uh, some of the other things that we do is uh, just a sampling port here. 
so we can actually take product and sample it. You know, if something's under a vacuum, um, it's very hard to take a sample because you have to either pump it out or pull vacuum and take a sample. So this sampling port allows us to take a real-time sample if, if you're uh, running any sort of analyses, HPLC or, or other. Um, so that's, that's just an overview of, of MINI. And then uh, let's, let's move over to remediation because that's really where I want to spend uh, the specifics. And so our remediation system is a, is a thermal oxidation process. It, it likes uh, a crude input. And so you take the crude product that you run either in our system or, or other, it doesn't have to be our system. And you take that product and you run that process. And so, so the first thing, of course, is actually getting that product from here to there. Um, and that's why we have this, this cart. It's, a, it's just a thermal cart um, that we uh, have made here that allows us to put product into it. And this allows us to transfer the oil from there to over to here. So this is a, a jacketed vessel. We can run this at 90 degrees C. Um, the, you know, the heater is, is the pump is jacketed, the, the lines are jacketed. So again, when you turn the pump on, it works without uh, any uh, frustrations of, of, of cool spots. And so here's a bunch of, I think we've got about 30 kilos of oil in here that we're running right now of crude. And so what you do is you take your crude oil, try not to drop your phone in there, and uh, you move it over to a remediation system. And so uh, this is our R&D series of, of remediation systems. Um, this is our R&D 70. So this unit here uh, runs up to 70 kilograms of, of product per processing vessel. So you can put up to 70 kilograms of product in here, and this runs that remediation cycle. And so the reason we have three vessels is because we want to be able to run um, 70 kilos per day. And so this process takes up to about 72 hours of, of processing time. It's just the time um, duration and, and settings that, that run this process. And so we have three vessels you could be running one every day removing product every day adding product to the next one so this is a continuous batch continuous process so just in regards to the process um, it's really very easy to use from a from a um, product standpoint so you put your product in we like to use the transfer cart but you don't have to you can you can you know just dump your product in the top of it if you want um, it uses heat agitation and, and solvent injection. So everything is is designed into the product. Um, there's full, it's fully automated and we wanted to make this very easy to use. And so um, how to use the equipment is you put your product in, we have level measurement in here and we have um, temperature measurement, we have uh, gas flow, uh, mass flow meters, um, everything's controlled from an automation standpoint. So when you run your system and I'm running a there's a couple options. We can just warm the product so it stays warm, um, or you can remediate. So when you run, you run the system. So I'll start this product again. So that's that's running. If you want to run warming or if you want to run remediation, you just choose, and it's that easy. You just choose what you want, and you press go. And so what that does is it measures how much product's in the vessel. It injects the required amounts of solvents into the process, and it runs the the product. So there's a couple of ways to run this, and it's very specific in terms of controlling um, CBD, minimizing CBD loss and, and um, optimizing THC loss, of course, uh, for what this does. So there's very specific tuning parameters that we do to allow us to run THC down to non-detect. And we did, we, and I'm gonna have our chemists come out and talk about that here in a minute, but um, we, de we determined non-detect from our side around one or 200 parts per million. Um, that's what we can run on HPLC methods. A lot of labs out there, when you send product to, they can't get below about 800 parts per million. So that allows us to run that THC down to those levels of, of non-detect and also um, optimize or, or minimize our CBD loss. And so we can run uh, less than five points of CBD loss on this process. Uh, there's a couple of ways of sampling that product over the period of time and controlling the process um, that that you can choose from as a user. So one is we run the process, you can sample it, and then you stop the process when you get to a point that you want to stop the process at. The other is um, our Canaspec series of, of THC and CBD readers. 
So what this is is an infrared, near infrared sensor um, that goes into the process itself. It's calibrated to measure real time CBD and THC um, as you're running the process. And so what that enables you to do, number one, is track that product and that and those cannabinoids over time, and also use that as a as a um, feedback mechanism to control the process. So. Again, as we're running this product, you want to be able to sample the product. You want to be able to um, run your analyses on this. And so, again, like the sample port is very handy. Before, um, actually, our chemist Daniel came up with this. We were trying to, you know, take out samples and, and do things very uh, ineffectively. So this is a very effective means to just sample product very easily and then put that product in um, to 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 analyses. So. This is our 70 series. We have the, uh, our uh, RMD 200, which is the same type of process. It's, it just allows us to put in 200 uh, kilos of, of product into a vessel at a time and run that uh, per per uh, per batch. Um, I got Daniel here. I'm going to just pass the, the uh, call over to, to Daniel real quick. So, hey, Daniel, can you talk just about HPLC methods, what the difficulties are just in general about running this product and running down to those very low THC levels, detecting those levels and um, and the CBD and, and just and just running that process from, from the analytics side. Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> with HPLC, so we take out a sample here, um, we take it over to our lab, and it is about five or six steps of sample processing. So in all those steps, there is a degree of error that comes into it. Um, and so when we're trying to get down to these really low levels, those errors become pretty significant, which means we can't uh, reliably detect. So that's where the system comes in, and with Canispec, uh, that allows us to be able to track it throughout the entire process, which essentially removes the errors of sampling, of moving from one place to another, and doing all those different steps, running it on the HPLC, making sure everything's calibrated. Uh, so we've seen a lot of issues in terms of going to different third-party labs and being able to match up data across the labs. What, so what, what's the, do you know what, what's the main uh, issue that, uh, that third-party labs have with looking at products from remediation in general? Uh, so remediation, um, it can sometimes generate different compounds and uh, most labs have very standard set uh, methods for measuring uh, flour to concentrate. Uh, so there is no specific method for this material, which uh, incorporates even more issues with uh, polluting heat and things like that. Okay. And so that's what you've been able to do here in, in, in our lab is develop those methods to be able to look at those very low levels of THC. Exactly. And since I've, I've had a lot of different oils come through and we've tested it in this remediation process and I've built methods around that particular oil with particular impurities to be able to really good numbers on the level. Nice. Yeah, so it's been, been uh, great having those results for sure as we, as we tune that process in. And so, um, yeah, so that's that's basically how this product runs. It's very, this is very easy. So once the process starts, then it's hands-free. It's, you, you, right, you can be doing other things for the next, you know, 72 hours of processing is around the, the time frame for the processing loop to finish. Uh, and drop those values down. Of course, those can be optimized around your specific product that you're bringing in. So, after the product's done, um, when the system is complete, your your oil comes off, and you're left with a tea-free crude um, product. And so, that is one um, offtake of a product is just that crude uh, oil that doesn't have any THC left in it. Of course, the other thing is you want to clean that up, and so that's what we've done here is. This is um, a tea-free distillate that we've taken from our remediation and run it in through our distillate um, apparatus. And so this is a tea-free um, distillate. So it's pretty, pretty um, uh, nice for consumers that want you know, this type of product. So that's what uh, we've done. We don't see an increase in concentration from uh, crude to distillate. So you're not you know, spiking THC when you go to distillate. This is still a, a non-detect level of, of THC in this product. So um, if this is something that you're, you are interested in, um, yeah, I'd love to re have you reach out to our team and uh, follow.
follow up with you on, on what your interests are. Um, if there's any questions, yeah, uh, please reach out and we can, we can answer Dwayne's them. Dwayne's asking, can the remediation system remediate both desolate and crude? Yeah, oh, actually, okay. So I, I didn't mention that. So what I wanted to mention is is different oils that we can that we can remediate. So yes, it can remediate distillate. Um, you do get some depronation of color as you run the process. So when you put distillate in, you take it out. It's going to be darker, and so that's why if you it's from our end, it's not advantageous to run distillate because then you have to rerun the distillate to clean up the color. So what we recommend is the crude product going into the equipment. If you want to run distillate, yes, you can do it. Um, but, you know, if you set up your process, we recommend running it crude in and then going to distillate afterward. So this, the other thing that I forgot to mention is the, another very key um, processing feature of this equipment is, is running mother liquor. And so with mother liquor, that's, you know, the, the offtake from uh, isolate, uh, the isolate process. And so it's, a, it's an oil that's left with a lower amount of CBD and a higher amount of THC. And so what you're able to do with this equipment is run all of that waste product, which is traditionally a waste product, put that product in here, take the, drop the THC out, and then go to either a distillate that's tea free and or recrash that into an isolate powder if you don't have that THC that's preventing those um, isolate from forming. And so there's a really good um, opportunity to use this for mother liquor which is traditionally a waste product uh, that we've seen. Stefan wants to know about EU GMP and CGMP. So in regards to GMP and EU GMP, um, that's both uh, requirements that we can meet. So this system here is going over to a, um, an EU GMP facility. Um, it's actually a, a farmer grade facility. So there's specific requirements surrounding that, um, mostly around our quality process. And so we can not only meet that requirement from a design side, of course, if you're an EU GMP customer or GMP customer that has specifics on the material certs, if you want 316 um, certs on it, um, in terms of sourcing, we need to know that when the project starts. Uh, but we can meet those requirements um, from a quality standpoint in terms of documentation, um, all the requirements that go into um, EU GMP process, we can we can meet those requirements and certify this thing to go into an EU GMP environment. So absolutely. Um, so then electricity. So electricity, yes, this thing can be configured 208 um, or, or 463 phase here in the United States, uh, 60 hertz. Um, also, this uh, piece of equipment is going overseas. This one's going into a facility that runs 380 volt, 50 hertz. So we just need to know what your electricity requirements are, and we can configure the equipment to run on those um, that power grid. Any other questions? Cool. Um, yeah, so, hey, thanks, guys, again. Appreciate your time. Uh, it's been a pleasure speaking to you, and uh, look forward to reaching out and, and talking to you in person. Thanks. That was awesome.